Hello everybody, this is Scott Woods. I'm coming to you live from the Bat Cave in a secure location here in the Midwest. I'm going to let you guys learn how to move a little freight for free. Look, you know my classes are the number one classes in the country, but I always like to upload these YouTube videos to kind of give some people entering the industry a little bit of education just to show them that we actually know this job and we do it every day ourselves. All right. We like to separate ourselves from the schmuckleberry fins, like I call them, who are all over the internet and YouTube that are doing nothing but fleecing innocent people. Guys, what you see in front of you here is some product literature on a piece of Caterpillar equipment. Now, whether or not you know anything about the industry or not, or heavy machinery, I move a lot of heavy machinery. You know, uh, So I'm going to tell you what this piece is. What this piece is, is a hydraulic excavator. It's the CAT 336 EL model. It actually is the newer model, which replaced the old CAT 330. All right, I've probably moved three or 400 of these in the last 10 years. You know, and I'm going to teach you the first steps that you have to take when moving a piece of heavy equipment or even, you know, starting your quote to the shipper. The number one thing that we all have to get right when we are moving heavy equipment or moving any type of equipment is we have to get the transportation dimensions correct. Now, you're looking at this piece of product literature, and we're going to get right to it. Not a lot of fluff here. Just get right to the meat. What we're looking for are dimensions and specifications. The first dimension we want to take a look at is weight. Now, with most Caterpillar equipment, the weight will be on the front page. Okay, it'll be on page one. You'll see it right down here. Weight, the minimum weight, they'll list it in kilograms and pounds. Minimum weight is 36,100 kilograms or 79,600 pounds. Maximum weight, 39,100 kilograms or 86,200 pounds. Now, that could be a little discerning, to say the least, because, yes, that's true on brand new equipment. But if you're ever moving used equipment, you have to take into a f account hydraulic fluids, engine oil, gas, mud, rocks, which will add thousands of pounds to a unit. All right. But for what we're looking at right now, we're looking at new equipment, all right? So the first thing we want to know is the weight. Why do we have to know the weight? Because we have to know which type of truck and trailer that we're going to need. Now, this is going to move on an RGN, a removable gooseneck. Now, we go through in our course how to move heavy haul freight, okay? Now, this isn't really heavy haul. There's a lot of truck drivers out there that think that they think it is because, quite frankly, they like to say, hey, I move heavy haul at the truck stop versus pulling a dry van, you know, because they like to put that on the side of their trucks, specialized or heavy haul or or whatnot. 80, 85, 86,000 pounds is baby stuff. But, for, you know, for a good conversation, we're going to call it heavy haul. You know, it's kind of like beginning heavy haul. But we've got our weight down. We know we're going to need an RGN, and as a general rule, if I if this is the max weight, it weighs 86,000 pounds, I'm going to be searching for an 8-axle RGN. That's a combination of the axles on the truck and the axles on the trailer, all right? So I need eight total axles so that weight can be distributed correctly. Now, why am I searching for an 8-axle? Because generally, a truck on the, and I go by the east, East side of the Mississippi, states will allow a truck anywhere from 10 to 11,000 pounds per axle without going over in, you know, where they can legally run. It's still going to be a permitted load, but that's how they've got their trucks set up on their cab cards on what they can run, you know, for max weights, things like that. All right, so I'm going to put this on an eight axle to run it. Now, you could put this on a nine axle, but it would be overkill. And you would have to, the more axles, the more money, 
you know, so you want to try to put this on the exact same tra the exact trailer it needs so you don't overpay for this stuff. All right. Well, the next things we're going to need, we're going to need the shipping length of the unit, the shipping width and the shipping height. So we're going to go down here and you'll see that I have uh, Adobe Acrobat Pro so I can actually open this up like a book and I can break it down into the sections. And if you don't have that program, you won't be able to do this. You'll have, just have to scroll through the stuff, but this will make it quicker. So I'm going to click that. It's going to expand out. All right. And it's going to bring up my different specs and what I'm looking for basically are the shipping dimensions and right there you'll see I've got dimensions and these are transport dimensions very important word transport dimensions now you'll see that it brings up a schematic and I'm going to try to enlarge that for you all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the diagram here and I'm going to find my dimensions so let's look at figure eight and I'll go down to and it'll say transport width down here all right and you're going to see that the transport width width on it and it doesn't matter which model corresponding model here at the top is 10 foot 10 inches but that's with the 28 inch grousers or a shoe all right then it goes down to the 32 inch shoes it gets wider it's 11-1 gets wider even more with 34 inch shoes to 11 3. now why do we have to know that because this is an overweight load and it's a permitted load all right and basically we want to know how wide it is to be able to give an accurate quote to our shipper and to represent it correctly to our truck all right and this is with all these dimensions we're going to run our permit cost before we give our bid and depending on the state you know um, what their permit regulations are, permits go up or down depending on dimensions. Plus, it also might mean we might need um, escorts, oversized load escorts, pole cars, etc. Well, I can tell you right now, just with that width of, of 11 foot 3, you're not going to need an escort anywhere in America. All right, but it's good to check these things anyway. All right, so we've got our width established. We've got our weight established. Let's get our height. All right, now... We're going to look at representation number one for our height. Now, you're going to see we got representation number one for height, and we got representation number nine for height. All right. Now, number one says shipping height, and you'll see that it says 12 foot on one, 11 foot six on the other, 11 foot 10 on the other. Now, I, I generally will give them you know, basically the higher amount, the dimensions, because I don't know, we're not there measuring it. It's the truck's job to measure it. All right. It's the truck's job to measure it. You know, it's the shipper's job to measure it. The truck always has to verify, you know, before he, he leaves the facility with it, because we're going to give him the closest, you know, dimensions we can, and you always reinforce this in your rate confirmations, but you know, you just got to tell them to verify. You put that as a disclaimer. So I'm going to tell them it's, it's 12 foot tall. All right. With it. And that's with, uh, with the top guard, it's 12 foot tall for the 3660 on the 3510. It's 11, six. And with the 3510, again, it's 11, six. So, I mean, you, in one aspect, you could tell the truck it's 11, six to 12 foot, depending on what it has. All right. Now, what I'm going to go to here, and you'll see the reason it's 12 foot t tall is because of that on the boom with the top guard on the boom here. All right. Now, let's go to figure nine over here on the right. You'll see that it goes, it looks like it's just as tall as figure number one, but it's going to say cab height, cab height with top guard. It's showing it's only 10 foot four inches tall. All right. Or 11 foot tall respectively now the reason i'm going to go with the highest point on this piece because the type of equipment this has got to be loaded on is an rgn a removable gooseneck it will actually be driven up on it and the way it sits is the way it'll be loaded all right this uh you'll see the stick in the bucket and you, the bucket is what's curled up underneath and the stick is what's holding it you know basically that'll lay on top of the fifth wheel 
and the tracks and the carriage will go in what is called the well the well all right now these tracks right here I'm going to go with their longest point all right once again figure five track length now it says basically uh, 16 foot 6 inches long so what that tells you is you're going to need to have at least 16 foot 6 inches in the well to load this all right now what we're going to do I'm going to put all this together and I'll describe how you're going to represent this to the truck when he calls in you post this load on the load board you know you would post the weight the only thing I would do when I post this you know on the load board I post where it's coming from where it's going to and I would post the weight of the unit I would tell him when he comes in I'd say look I got a one pick one drop it weighs 86,000 pounds it's supposed to be a new piece of equipment um, those are uh, those are machine those are catalog specs driver and I'll talk to him just like a meeting at the truck stop. I said the approximate dimensions are 11 six wide, 12 foot tall, and I'm going to need 16 six in the well. And then I'll offer him a rate. All right. Now I'll give him the the make and model number. If he's an actual driver, I'll give him the make and model number if he asks for it. If he's not, if he's a freight dispatcher or a truck agent, because I'm always going to interview these guys, you know. I'm only going to tell him it's machinery because what a freight dispatcher for a trucking company will do and a truck agent for a trucking company, they'll try to steal your freight. All right. So if you give them the exact piece of what it is, where it's coming out of, they'll call every machinery hawk in town to try to find that damn thing. You know, so you got to kind of play it on the sly. Now, I'll always once I write the deal you know, and get a truck to take it, I'll always put the correct make and model on there with the dimensions and where it's picking up at. But I'm going to be kind of vague until I make sure I'm dealing with a real truck. Guys, that's a little bit on how to read a spec sheet, you know, for an excavator, what to transport it on. You know, it's kind of your introduction to heavy haul. Uh, this is one of the things that we teach in our courses. Um, I'd like you to view our website at www.freightbrokertrainer.com. Once again, www.freightbrokertrainer.com. We are America's premier freight broker training program. You will learn more from us about brokering freight and how to be successful and profitable at it than anybody in the country. I myself, without sounding grandiose and arrogant, have forgotten more about moving freight than these schmucks that you're watching on YouTube will ever learn. Thank you for viewing our videos. View the rest of our YouTube channel. If you've ever, ever got a question, send us an email. We'll help you out. And um, enjoy your day. This is Scott Woods signing off from the Bat Cave.